let's call this meeting to order, get the party started. Uh, I will call the Board of Selectmen, Hamilton Board of Selectmen meeting um, <clears throat> to order for April 20th at 6.33 p.m. Uh, and we'll start with a roll call um, attendance. We'll start with uh, Darcy. You're muted. I thought it was me. Darcy <laughs> Dale here. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen here. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy here. All right. The, the gang is almost all here. All right. So now we have, forgive me for a second here. We have our Pledge of Allegiance. So I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America. America. Into, into the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. all. Play ball. All right. Now <clears throat> we have a, a handful of uh, board openings. We have a Hamilton Historic District Commission one opening. Uh, the Hamilton Hamilton. Uh, bo Zoning Board of Appeals, one opening. Uh, open Space Community, two openings. Planning Board for two associate members. Uh, and the Affordable Housing Trust, one opening. All right, and now we have a section of our agenda where we have public comment. Uh, three minutes from anyone who has something to say that is not on our current agenda. So if anybody wishes to speak tonight, they are more than welcome to in this beginning portion. All right, moving on, we have selectmen and town manager reports. Uh, Darcy, do you have anything to share tonight? Yeah, actually I, I do. Um, last week, Rosie and I were uh, tour guides um, for the town hall and we're going to be um, hosting several more. The next one will be April 22nd, which is a Thursday from 5.30 to 7.30. The next one will be April 30th, Friday from five to seven. And the last one would be May 5th from noon to 2 p.m. contingent upon the ATM passing those particular warrant articles. Um, one thing I definitely want people to know, during the tour, I myself wasn't really that familiar with the building, but as I, you know, as time went on and I was learning more about the building, I, I really have to say it is, a, it's scary how um, dangerous it is. And uh, for example, I had to shut off the lights and uh, there is only one light switch and it was in the basement. You can only, there's like one light switch. That's how out of compliance it is. Usually with a modern home or a modern building, you have a light switch at the top of the stairs and at the bottom. Well, I found myself in pitch dark. I mean, literally pitch dark. There was not one beam of light coming from anywhere. And I didn't have my phone on me. So I creep <laughs> in the stranded. back of the building, the narrow stairway, mm -hmm. and it was really steep. And I found myself creeping up that stairway step by step because I couldn't, and I was wearing heels. So I'm having, you know, I have to be really careful. And um, it was just really scary. There wasn't an emergency light. There was no uh, night light or anything. And I'm wondering if it's knob and tube wiring. That's how concerned I am. So then I had to go to the second floor where um, all those offices are and the same thing. There was one light switch and I found myself in almost complete dark. And I had to be very, very careful leaving. And, and it's way on the other side of the building. So you have to kind of fumble your way <laughs> to the front where you can get to the stairs. And um, so I, it really needs a lot of help. And the other thing that struck me was when I started mm -hmm. giving tours in the memorial room, it just was really very emotional because we have lists and plaques on the wall of all those young people for centuries who have served and some of them never came back from where they served. 
And I just, I just think we need to, I'm really looking forward to rededicating a beautiful space for all those young people who sacrifice so much for all of us. And, um, you know, I really wish that people would, would come. I challenge them to come and look at the room and see everything in town hall. And I'm really looking to conjure up some, you know, town spirit, some civic pride, um, we were pioneers that helped settle the West. They came from Hamilton. And I would like to see a little bit of, um, you know, civic, civic um, pride and community. I really would. I think, I think people are hungering for that. And I think this new um, area where we will be having our town hall, our selectmen meetings, um, if this does pass, will be a beautiful space for the, um, the uh, memorial room to rededicate and also for us to be with each other like a community. You know, there'll be lots of opportunities to do that. So I'm really, really hoping that people will come and um, take a tour with us. And that's about all. All right, thanks, Darcy. Uh, Rosie, do you have anything to add tonight? I do. I, I do. I have a couple of things. So I got this in the mail today, which of course everybody will be getting. And mm -hmm. I, I get on the reverse side, it talks about the um, town hall renovation. And um, aside from the personal tours, there will also be Zoom um, presentations, which um, is sort of easy because it's in the privacy of your own home in your pajamas. And <laughs> um it's it's a good presentation of discussing the the needs of the town hall. So I hope people will look at that um, um, postcard and choose um, a time that might be convenient for them to to learn about um, the town hall renovation. Um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the conservation commission um, met uh, last Wednesday. And um, George Tarr talked about the um, um, conser conservation restriction that he's hoping um, will be enacted or will be voted upon. Um, and he is not going to bring it to town hall, to town meeting this year as a conservation restriction, but is uh, willing to work with the town and, and um, developing an MOU so that um, the um, acreage around the Patton homestead will be protected and available for use for, for years to come. And it all, will also provide connectivity between the trails um, that are owned by Greenbelt and, and the launch, which is um, on the far side of the property. Um, I think, and he's, um, and um, Sean, just just for your edification, he's um, planning to bring that to the May third, that our next selectman meeting, so that we can have a discussion about it. Um, okay. So, so I think I think that was all for me. Thank you. Okay, great. Thanks, Rosie. Jamie, do you have anything to add tonight? Yeah. Um, so last Wednesday we had a may not have been Wednesday. Anyway, last week we had <laughs> sometime. <laughs> The Affordable Housing Trust, and um, uh, we did. We actually had two candidates applying for the vacancy, um, and unanimously chose one of them. And not it wasn't too contentious. Uh, the other candidate uh, is had actually put down three other boards that she was interested in, and she just wants to get involved. So hopefully, we'll be. Um, <clears throat> seeing more of her. Um, so anyway, that'll be coming before us, obviously next meeting for consideration. So look forward to that. There's obviously a lot of other stuff going on with affordable housing potentials in Hamilton. Um, the Willow Street thing is obviously going forward. Uh, two projects on Bay Street being discussed at the planning board in a few minutes. Um, and, uh, and then Gordon Conwell and that, how that all plays into things. Um, and then in addition to that, it was, so we met, uh, excuse me, change, well, the, the Human Rights Commission um, met for the first time uh, on March 31st um, and, uh, and had a good meeting and I, I won't 
say a whole lot about it other than it just seems appropriate today on the uh, because on the day of the verdict for George Floyd in the sense that uh, that is that and our community event that uh, was hosted at the public safety building uh, helped get the Human Rights Commission going. Um, and uh, it's easy to think that those um, Your food is things that are happening in Minneapolis and things uh, is far removed from us, but there's definitely uh, a strong connection uh, or there should be in our, in our minds and how we're connected to world events and events far and wide. So, uh, and the Human Rights Commission meets again tomorrow. Uh, Human Rights Commission. Tomorrow Perfect. Night. Thank you. Um, Sean, um, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. There's just one thing that I forgot, and it's actually just a question. Um, in terms of the planning board alternate, Joe, did you get a, um, Jack Lawrence had said that he was interested and submitted an application. I think we have either two or three applications that are, were, were forwarded to the planning board for okay. them to, to, to consider. I believe there, there might be three. Uh, oh, good. So, so. Okay, good. Just wanted to, just wanted to let Sean know that his weekly pleas for people to help um, is being heard in the community. Thanks. Perfect. All right. I really don't have anything to add tonight. We'll just kind of get right into it. So uh, town manager report. Joe, do you want to add anything tonight? Oh, just real quickly, uh, uh, a little bit of good news. The um, COVID case numbers have declined again locally. Thankfully, we're back down to 12 cases. Um, you know, the Board of Health and Public Health nurse, Health nurse have asked that we express that the, they appreciate residents' renewed efforts to follow social distancing and mask guidelines. Um, and just a reminder that the annual town meeting will be Saturday, May 1st on the football field under the tent. Um, so uh, folks can view the uh, warrant. It's up on the town meeting. Uh, I mean, sorry, on the town website. And uh, we'll be getting it back from the printers on Thursday and mailing it out to homes directly. So they'll have a hard copy in their hands by Thursday. But if they want to get a sneak peek, uh, the warrant and the uh, appendices are up on the town website. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Now we have our... <clears throat> Uh, consent agenda. We have two things. Uh, first is approve the minutes of the March 21st, 2021 meeting. Uh, and the second one is approve use of Patton Park by the Hamilton Wenham High School girls basketball team. I move that we approve oh. the consent agenda. Second. All right. Uh, uh, so the, I just have one point of discussion on that in that yeah. simply that on the agenda, it says March 21st, but the actual minutes are from March 31st. So so let's uh, let's amend our our uh, motion to to say March thirty first. So moved. Thank you. And seconded. Uh, thank you, Rosie. Uh, any other discussion on the on the basketball team using the park for their gathering or anything it, else? It's just a one time uh, sort of tournament, right, Sean? Yeah, yeah, that sounds great. It's, I think it, it's, it's it's the end of their year wrap up. I think. Yeah. They wanted to be able to do it social distance and, and still get together. So yeah. I think it's a great use of the park. I think it sounds wonderful. All right. So uh, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Jamie. Jamie Knutson, aye. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, and myself, Sean Farrell, aye. The ayes have it. All right. On to our main agenda. We have uh, an update on the compost rollout uh, from Tim Olson, who couldn't be here tonight. I just saw my email from Joe, um, but um, obviously we, we've we been talking about it a little bit, uh, and everyone in town has been abuzz about it since we <laughs> enacted the mandate, um, but we will be starting to uh, enforce it. We've been putting stickers on, on cans and stuff. Uh, Joe, did you want to add anything to this since Tim's not here? Did he relay anything to you? He just laid, it relayed that for the last couple of weeks, Casella has been uh, putting um, notices on, on bins that weren't compliant and, and letting people know that beginning the week of May 3rd, that uh, bins that aren't accompanied by the green compost bin will be, um, will be not, not taken. And um, he, he asked me, and I, I mentioned in the time manager report that, that there is still time to get um, a, a replacement compost bin for those who haven't done that. There are, um, we ordered extras and we have some still on hand. So folks who want to get them can uh, just contact the DPW office to do so. And Joe, are they going to be um, gratis for, for residents? Yes. Okay, super, super. Yeah. 
right? And, I, and I'm assuming, hopefully correctly, that we'll push out some more notifications here as we get a little bit closer. Uh, and I also shared with, with Tim Olson a little bit of time ago, and, and I talked to Joe about the other day, that I've talked to the folks in Vermont that run their composting program in Vermont a couple of times. Uh, and they actually have a great website for all their compost stuff in the state of Vermont. There's a bunch of links. And I thought we could kind of look through those and kind of take some of what they've written and, and make our kind of own version of it or, or kind of bootleg some of it of what they've already done uh, because it's a very thorough kind of compost do's and don'ts and, and stuff like that. And they give tips on backyard composting as well as what to put in the bins and stuff like that. So I think all that would be very helpful as we kind of get closer to roll out. I think people have kind of either the buzz has worn down about it or people have kind of accepted it, but we'll, we'll see in the next couple of weeks here, as they say, the proof is in the pudding. So um, I see that Ann and, and Gradle are on tonight and they were part of the initiative to, to move this forward. Do, do you two uh, have anything to add tonight or any tips or anything like that for our folks at home? Um, this is Anne. I was just wondering whether we've seen a, a decrease in the tonnages. I didn't know whether Tim had had those numbers. That's a good question, Anne. Uh, I don't think I don't think Tim's pulled numbers yet. Um, we, we, we'd be able to show you what's happened since January, February, March, but since we haven't been actually, um, you know, uh, forcing compliance yet at this point, um, I don't know what it would tell us. So. Um, I know that I have noticed that I have noticed that people have more people have been putting out their green bins. So I was just wondering whether, even though it's not mandatory yet, whether there is an increase in the organics tonnage and a, and a decrease in trash. But um, it's nice um, to get those at some point. Those numbers. Yeah, Ann brings up a good point, Joe. I think, and and I we'll see if the rest of the board kind of agrees that we should probably have some type of a update from Joe or Tim, maybe three months in, six months in, something like that, and, and see what kind of the, the decrease or increase is in, in the different tonnages. Does that seem like a reasonable thing? Collect some data on it anyway. Yep. Well, you have to, yeah. <laughs> Sounds yeah. Right. It just should be happening. Right. Yes, I'm yeah. pleased that you are uh, allowing residents to have the green bins no charge. Mm. I think that's that's been helpful. I think that was a, a good portion of the stress for people. They didn't yeah. have a green bin or they had gotten rid of it. And and now, you know, what do they do? But I think that's it's gone a long way to get out the green bins. And I would say, Joe, maybe push another notice about green bins and exemptions, because I mean, I think there's kind of two different tracks here. One is the the ban is actually really starting with enforcement. And the, and the other one is letting people know they can still get compost bins. Uh, and or an exemption sticker for their compost in the backyard. It's kind of two different venues, but along the same lines. I'll, um, we'll we'll uh, plan on uh, providing some data uh, and then maybe in three months, uh, some data, current data uh, at the uh, yeah. upcoming meeting. And then in three months, we'll just do a, a whole look back uh, from January through that period. So, you know, June or July, we'll, uh, we'll look and see how, how things are going. Yeah. And then, and then one last thing before we move on, it just popped into my head is either with the assessor's office or Corinne, um, you know, trying to figure out people that are moving in the town to make sure that they're, I don't want to get people a, a sticker or their trash not picked up before they understand the program. So some type of mechanism that triggers, um, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, that triggers that kind of mechanism so we can notify new folks to town about the program and, and, and send them some type of information and, and things like that. I don't know if we have, we kind of have something in place, but I don't think it's. The best system. So maybe figuring out something that triggers, that triggers um, the information you need to get out. Sean, it's right in there. So, so there, there um, months, months ago, ago the, the clerk's, clerk's office, office used to send, send out, out a new resident, resident package welcoming people to town. town. Um, Brian, you're, having... you're echoing terribly. Is there a second? Uh, well, yeah. I don't know. Can you, Can you hear, hear me, me now? now? Is it still, still echoing? echoing? Yes. Yeah, it sounds like oh. a stadium. Do you have a piece of paper near the speaker? Piece of no. Paper? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. 
Is is is, the, is somebody in the house watching the meeting somewhere else? No. no. Wow. Hmm. Okay. So, so I'll for okay, Sorry. Sorry. All right. We can we can we can catch up when when uh when next time I see you and we can talk about it. Sorry. Uh, just just as an FYI, the the waste reduction team had been doing that every month. Um, right. Before we was doing it, uh, looking up on the real estate records, and, and we were sending out uh, a monthly batch of, of letters. Um, I think. All right, that's good. So maybe we continue that and make it a little bit more robust if we need to. Perfect. And, and I think Corinne was planning on starting up a yes. letter from the town clerk's office to all new residents. And we were gonna, right. she was gonna roll the description of the trash program into that. So uh, Linda is continuing to do that until Corinne gets the town clerk letter up and going. Okay, that's great. great. That's Thanks. my understanding. All right, uh, if anybody has anything else uh, or not, I should say we'll move on to our next topic. And that is, uh, the Woodbury Street speed change, uh, discuss and vote in, in uh, Chief Russ Stevens couldn't be with us tonight, um, but Joe can get us up to speed on that, hopefully. Yeah, so we, uh, we had an issue come up with a, a few residents noting uh, some high rates of speed on Woodbury, particularly southbound from uh, the intersection with uh, Essex going towards the Wenham town line. And um, so I asked uh, Chief to take a look at it. Um, he ran some tests out there, noted that, yeah, they, they kind of felt the same thing and that the signage was a little bit all over the place. Um, because it's a state road, Route 22, we had to um, do an engineering report and uh, compile uh, the information. And so what you have before you tonight is a request for you to approve the recommendation of that report, which would be to petition the state to adjust the speed limit uh, between uh, Essex Street and the Wenham Town Line to 30 miles an hour from a currently posted 40 miles per hour. The issue here is that uh, south of the Wenham Town Line, it is 30 miles an hour, and uh, north of Bridge Street, it, uh, north of Essex to Gordon Conwell, it's 25 miles an hour, where it then returns to 30 miles an hour. So we have, you know, three different um, speed limit changes in a space of less than a mile. Um, with uh, the only section being about four tenths of a mile between uh, Essex Street and the town line, um, that doesn't really seem to be compatible to helping people maintain a, a good safe speed. Uh, given that 30 miles is kind of the right speed limit for that uh, road and uh, that most of the road is at that or less, uh, they're recommending 30 miles per hour. That, that recommendation is echoed by Chief Stevens and Tim Olson. And, um, we, if, if you agree with that and vote that way, we'd have the letter here for uh, for your signature, Sean, and then we'd send it into the state and we'd have to wait for the state to rule on it before we could change the posting. Uh, any any thoughts on that? And there was quite an extensive engineering study in our packets tonight. I looked, I mean, I yeah. wouldn't say I read every page of it, but <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of data there and it kind of all points to kind of where we're going with this, so. I don't know if anybody else looked through it in in, in detail. Yeah, but, uh. I I agree that it should be lowered. I am actually at the two tenths mark between mm -hmm. the town line and Essex Street. Right. So I'm at the crest of a, a small hill, and sometimes those people get airborne. And over the years, I've seen some really really scary stuff. So I think it would be useful, helpful <laughs> to to lower that speed limit. So they come over the hill at 60 mm -hmm. because it's 40 and they, what's another 20, right? right. <laughs> what's another 20 miles an hour? But uh, are they going to be enforcing this or is it just going to? I would imagine we would put out our kind of speed radar thing out there with this, you know, this is how fast you're going. You should be going this fast. I'm, yeah, I'm assuming that anyway cool. for a while. And they'll probably have somebody out there in, enforcing in the beginning right. as people get used to it. Right. Am I allowed to vote on this? <laughs> Is there a conflict? No, nobody's so. you're, you're no, not going to benefit. You're not getting any money from it financially or anything like this. You're, this is a life. Uh, this is a quality Unless life issue where you're a select person or, or, uh, elected to take care of these types of issues. So, yeah. I don't unless you're putting up a toll booth, booth Darcy, <laughs> that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> you put a speed bump in a toll booth, but uh, yeah. oh God. Any other discussion, Jamie or Rosie, anything to, to add? 
No, I think it's it sounds like a, a great idea. That road is very twisty too, as I as I recall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a there's the iron rail fields right there. Yeah. Right, people across. Yep. That. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. All right. So if anybody wants to make a, a motion, and then I'll sign a letter, and we'll send it off to the DOT. I move that we approve the Woodbury Street speed change. And I'll second that. All right. Uh, and a roll call vote. We'll start with Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, aye. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, and myself, Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, and up next, we have is it, uh, board committee uh, training for anti bias sensitivity. Joe, you want to speak to this one since you did the research? Uh, thankfully, Michelle Lee did most of the research. She reached out to about four companies. She got quotes from two. We forwarded you what we have. Um, one one outfit is a little bit more local. They're uh, booked out till September and would cost about $4,000 to do just the anti-bias training. Another con- company is uh, a slightly different pricing model. It's a kind of per person, per employee that you sign up and you can sign up for one, two or three year so that you have kind of revolving training and you kind of lock your price in. Um, you know, if you, uh, the information was sent, was forwarded to you uh, separate from the packets, but sent, uh, forwarded to you all on uh, last Friday, uh, you could certainly vote to send us in a direction with, with either of those companies, or you could ask us to, you know, see if we can get another quote in or, uh, or something. But I think that uh, both companies offer good products. The descriptions of the training seemed to fit what the board was looking for. I do think the, uh, the Trailiant company, uh, like I said, offered a little bit more robust training in general, but potentially be the type of thing where we could do it, a training this year with boards and committees. And then in year two, I could may, perhaps get into using uh, the same kind of training for um, employees and, and things like that. So it might make sense to do it that way. Um, but you know, it's really up to the board. Thoughts from the group? I'd like to have the, what we can, the best value for our money. That's what I think we should be looking at. Do you think a third quote would um, be worthwhile, worth considering? Usually when you go for a service, you wanna have at least three quotes? Yeah, was, state law requires us to, uh, to seek three quotes and um, we did. We actually, as I said, M- Michelle's contacted four different companies. All the products are a little bit um, you know, different. They, they all kind of have their own training regimen. So it's a little bit hard to compare apples to apples. Um, like I said, I, I like the Trailiant model only because it kind of gives you a couple different years, um, different pricing, if, depending how many years you sign up to be with them. They provide the training. They'll, pers- they'll uh, localize it with our town letterhead and, you know, seal and things like that. Um, but uh, they kind of have a little bit more yeah, it's just a little more built out, a little more options that they could talk about. Uh, the quote from the second company seemed to be mostly focused on the anti-bias, a little bit on the sensitivity, and it was kind of a flat fee. This is the amount up to 35 people, and you know, you know, you're off and running. So uh, they're not exactly apples to apples comparisons. Um, if you want, we could we could try one more time to get a third quote, and I could even see if uh, if the companies have. Uh, some references that we could check. This was just a little bit of a quick turnaround from the last meeting when we discussed this. So we couldn't do references, but I could try to get references, um, you know, feedback on how the trainings were received um, to help you a little bit if you want to wait another meeting. So could you just tell us again, Trailian's um, cost? Yeah, let me see if I can pull up here. Um, it's, it's toward the end. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah. It depends on how many people we're having trained and then whether we choose one to one or three years. Right. Yeah. So, yeah you That's have, why you I, have, I had a hard time judging the cost because I don't know how many people we're right. necessarily talking about. Right. Yeah. If you can, if you want, I can try to, um, let me share the screen with the shows the. Yeah. It just seems yeah. like a, like it's, there are three very sh- short courses and I would, uh, I, I I wonder what the what the cost would be. One's a thirty five minute course, one's a twenty minute course, and one is a fifteen minute course. So that's thirty five, like just a little over an hour. Is so, this Trailiant, um the company that gives the most flexibility, according to you, Joe? Joe? 
it, it, you know, the, the way I look at it, it looks like it, it gives us a little bit more options. And, and, and I said, if you buy a three year license and for up to 30 people per year, your cost would be either $28 per employee or $22 per employee. So, you know, do the math. Um, let, me, let me do the math for us. Um, well, I, I think we should, if we can, see if we can come up with a third quote and see if in the meantime, we can get references, like you say, to get some feedback. Mm -hmm. yep. Because I think that's worth making the, I mean, if you're gonna make an investment, <clears throat> you need to be, have some surety. Yeah, I, I, agree, I agree with Darcy. Some, some references and maybe another, reach out to either another company, like you said, and, and see, because if we do do a, like say a three-year contract, which is kind of what I would kind of lean towards. I don't know what other people are thinking, but I think, I don't want to just have this once right. because we have yep. so much turnover on our boards and committees, yep. you know, mm -hmm. and then this gives us the option for employees too. And I think that's just as important as the boards and committees, you know, and, and all the people I've kind of talked to lately about this, that have had this type of training say it's really worthwhile. So, you know, I'd like to get as much exposure as you can for a kind of a longer period of time instead of just kind of one and done, but that's just my personal thoughts on it. But if Jamie, if thoughts? Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, if, if I, remember, I think that, you know, one of the things that you think about with this kind of training is that in order really for it to be effective, it needs to become part of the of the way that the people in the organization throughout from the boards and committees to the employees, managers up and down the organization have to really be thinking in this way. And you can't do that with just one training one time. It's not going to work. It's not going to set in. It's not going to create any kind of culture change. Uh, right. It's the same reason the state has gone to having, um, you know, biannual um, ethics and um uh, ethics training and, and certifications for everybody because you have to be, it has to be reinforced consistently. So, it, you know, whether, whatever we do this year, we're probably going to be looking at trying to make this kind of an investment long-term if we really want to have a culture change. So. Right. Jamie, you're going to say something before I kind of cut you off. I'm sorry. I, I mean, just that I, I mean, I think it makes sense if others want to consider other options. And I, I guess I would as well, as far as references, because I didn't, I, I doubt it. So I'd, I wouldn't mind a little more time and options to consider. Right. And it, it doesn't seem like if we said yes to one of them tonight, that it's going to happen tomorrow. Right. You know, the one was September and I can't remember the date it kind of available to the other ones, but you know, there'd be some lead time. So we're, we're not in a, we're not in per se a rush, but we, we want to do it sooner than later. All right. So any other, any other thoughts on that? So we've kind of, pushed it back on Joe and Michelle Lee to do a little bit more reference checking and, and research and maybe come up with another option, but at least check references on the ones that we're thinking about. And I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards the Trillion one, because like Joe said, it's a little more robust with more options, but I think coming back with a little bit more information from all of them would be great. Good with everybody? Thumbs up? Yes. All right, great. <laughs> Thanks, Dorothy. Uh, and then we have a water abatement. And Joe, could you share that screen for the abatement too? Yep. Please, thank you. And was it two abatements or just one? I can't. Uh, it was just one. Just um, one. Yeah. I just uh, let me find it in the packet. Where is your packets? Okay. I'm going to have to scan through to the water abatement. Give, give me a second. Yep. And then before Darcy asks, can you zoom in on it? That's, that's the lengthy uh, engineering study that we had done <laughs> on Woodbury Street. It was amazingly complex. Well, I'd like to be sure we answer all the questions for the state so they don't have right. them back no. to us. And, Right, right. I, I, I don't disagree. I'm just amazed. So just on that topic, once, once we send the, <clears throat> sorry, Rosie, once we send the letter, do you know kind of, did Russ or, or Tim or you have any kind of idea on turnaround time and, and then sign change, change and stuff like that? I didn't ask that question, but I think that, um, I, uh, I think that uh, certainly Tim kind of made it feel, made it seem like he thought it wouldn't take that long. Um, eight, you know, maybe a month or so. Um, and now do we, 
make new signs or does the state give us new signs? Uh, I'll double check, but I think they're going to make us do the signs, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely ask them if they can, if they have some 30 mile an hour okay. signs they can give us. And if they have yeah, them, they can give us. Okay. Ten and a three Walnut Road. Here you go. All right. You know, um, I had a question about this. It says that they're in Wenham. So who knows? Who knows about that? I mean, mm -hmm. I, do they get water from Hamilton? So there, are, because of the way the pipes run, there are a, a, a couple of examples of this. There are a couple of places where we have water customers who actually live in either Wenham or Essex. Okay. Uh, and actually, some of our residents are actually on those towns' water too. Again, because of where they are and where where the water pipes run to, sometimes it's easier to put them on that service, and they get billed that way. Oh, it's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that was my main question: was yeah. what was the address? Why are we abating right. when address? Yeah. yeah. And how much was it for again, Joe? Can you scroll down just a little bit, please? Two ninety two. Yeah, I knew it was close to three hundred. I couldn't remember. Mm. All right, so does anybody have any, uh, want to make a motion that we can have any discussion if we need to? I move that we approve the water abatement for, I can't remember his name, <laughs> Mr. Donovan. Yeah. Second. Is that it? Is that it? Okay, yes, um, I'll second that. All right, uh, any further discussion? All right, uh, roll call vote. We'll start with Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Jamie? Jamie Knudsen, aye. Um, Rosie? Uh, Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, and myself, Sean Farrell, aye. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, and then we have up next our Master Plan Steering Committee. Mm -hmm. And Joe, you want to intro this a little bit while I'm searching yep. for something. At the last meeting, the board kind of basically agreed to have a nine member steering committee work with the um, consultant when chosen. Um, the uh, It seems like you're settling on a, a makeup of about five um, members representing standing committees um, and four at large members who could be from the public may, may or may not uh, sit on other committees, but um, you were trying to represent at least I believe the board selectman planning board, FinCom, um, Con committee and CONCOM, I think, were the five that you yeah. talked about. Um, and you have, we have received since advertising this in the town, uh, on the town website and in uh, last week's e newsletter, uh, we have five applicants um, as wow, of this morning good. already. Um, so we'll be sending, we'll be preparing those for you for the next packet. Um, but um, to, just to update, you've got already got five applicants for what would be four seats. So not that we're, we'll stop taking applicants. And certainly the process is going to need more than just nine people. Uh, we're actually hoping that the nine will become, you know, 40 or 50 people that are involved in some way or shape or form and that, you know, hundreds will participate in the online forums, but that we want to have nine to nine to 20 or 30 who are actively involved in little subcommittees and things. But um, it's a good start. I mean, we've only been advertising it a week and a half, so. I'm pretty happy with uh, the quick, quick responses. That's good. And, and do we have any, like, I'm thinking we have our members, do we want to, and this is kind of a question, we had talked about some alternates as well, but do we, we don't really have Joe on this, even though he's involved with it, do we want to make him an official member or maybe Patrick Reffitt? You know, we talked about FinCom as well. I, I would we, like we, to have the people that live in the town be on right. the committee. Mm. Okay. And, and if, then, if, if I might, I just, I would be a little uncomfortable with that as well. I mean, yeah. my job is to implement the policy and stuff here. It's not that, you know, I will, you know, be working closely with the, with the uh, consultant because they're hired by us and I have to manage the contract, but it's not, it's not about what uh, any town manager's vision right. is. It's kind of what the town wants to, wants to come to consensus on. So, um, you know, I think. A, a right. So you, you would serve more kind of it as an, right. Advisor. As, keep, right. As advisor, kind of an OPM, keeping the, the consultant on track and stuff like that. Yep. And then we had talked about FinCom. Did we, and I forgive me if we resolved and I didn't know, but we had kind of felt that FinCom, there wasn't a compromise on their role as I FinCom. I, I sent an email to Tom McEnany. I haven't heard it back, but I basically phrased it that way. I said, given that there's no uh, fiduciary responsibility for the members of the steering committee, 
Uh, the Board of Selectmen was wondering if it's all right to appoint a member of the FinCom to represent FinCom on the steering committee, and I haven't heard back. So I'm, okay. I'm kind of going to take a silence as consent, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll double check with him for, to be sure. But I kind of Good idea. <laughs> Right. And the, and the only other person I thought besides, you know, Patrick Reffitt was was Tim Olson's involvement in it somehow, because or whoever the, D, you know, at, at the moment, it's, it's Tim and hopefully it is for a while. But, it, you know, the DPW director having some type of involvement in the process, maybe it's not on the committee, but, you know, a lot of stuff falls to the DPW with projects and, and things like that. So you could act as a consultant. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. That sounds good. Okay. Any other, any other comments? I just kind of wanted to hash it out a little bit more. And I, we, like Joe said, we have gotten a handful of applications, which is great. And I think I've seen it on our signboards and stuff like that. So people are seeing the signboards in town. So I think that's good. Any other comments on their steering committee? Hi folks. Sorry to interrupt. Um, we're actually trying to get into the planning board meeting and the link isn't working. <laughs> well, you're close, but not close. <laughs> you're on the right <laughs> night, but did it send you to our meeting instead? No, it just, it, uh, it, it, it looks like it's the link for the meeting two weeks ago. So I just came to this meeting, hoping I could <laughs> talk to somebody and get into that. Meeting. If you go uh, to the minutes and agendas, if you, if you go to the town website, minutes and agendas for the planning board, it's, yeah. there's the That's link good. there. And maybe in a couple of places. Um, also so if on the you calendar. Pull up the, the agenda. Two or three lines down will be that link to the. Um, yeah, I found the link, but it doesn't oh. work. No. We, we left a message for Patrick Reffert. All right, Joe. I think I can see Joe <laughs> frantically doing something. Uh, but in the meantime, I I, I just saw that uh, Michelle Bailey came online. It reminded me I, I forgot in the updates in the beginning that the school committee. <laughs> did talk about our town hall and, and did endorse the project. So that's, that's great news for, for that. So we're not competing against that kind of view again. And when it comes to the ballot. That's good. Thank you. School committee. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to, while Joe's doing that and looking for a link, I'm going to go back to our agenda. If I can find it again here. Um, so I think we're all set with the steering committee. So then our last item, is the um, flag policy discussion. And so uh, we had a flag policy um, in front of us before, um, and we, we tabled it because we weren't quite sure, you know, Joe had kind of graciously borrowed some stuff from some other towns and we didn't think it quite fit. Um, but I just wanted to kind of bring it up again because I know that our human rights committee is, I think, talking about it this week, maybe, maybe tomorrow even. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I guess I have some trepidations about it. And I guess my, my issue is that I think that we should fly flags, but at the same time, it opens flags for every kind of organization to do. Like if we hang a, a pride flag again, then the next day it could be the KKK flag if yes. they petition it, right? Yeah. And I don't know if that's the optics that we want for the flag pole in front of town hall. Joe and I had a bit of a discussion about possibly doing a, another flag pole somewhere in town that's more of a communal flag pole that wasn't associated with our municipality kind of right in front of town hall. You know, I don't know, Patton Park or some other location that was kind of neutral ground that these organizations mm -hmm. could I think uh, the flag, you but know, I'd like to hear what the human rights committee has is yeah. because I'm kind of at a okay I'm kind of stuck about it I guess yeah. so I, I I think as a as a board member um I, I would like to to say something about about this I think um first and foremost people have the absolute unfettered right to post any flag or placard on their own private property I I respect that I, I support that um um, but we, as you say, Sean, we need to consider all the circumstances relevant to uh, whether to raise a particular flag at town hall. Each flag that we would raise represents a discrete point of view by an individual group. So who decides this discretionary issue about gay rights, 
Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, Thin Blue Line, Support Palestine, Pro-Choice, Pro-Life. If we on the board have differing views about what we support, then our fellow residents most assuredly do as well. To raise discretionary flags polarizes and it inflames already heightened discussions about whose rights matter. Everyone's rights matter. And everyone has the inalienable right to put flags on their own private property. As a selectman, I'm elected to represent all the, re all the residents and I apply a best interest standard to this issue. And the best interest standard is an ideal to establish policies and duties that do no harm. And so with that in mind, I propose a neutral policy, Switzerland. The United States flag equally represents each and every person in this town. Its standard, as we just recited, is liberty and justice for all. That is the only flag that we as a municipality, as a government entity, should raise in front of our town hall. Or alter in the alternative, as you just mentioned, Sean, um, we should raise the, the flag of every entity who comes forward to request it, thereby ensuring equal access. But no discretionary flag raising because it involves censorship. It's my comment, thank you. Yes, I, I feel the same way. I think that if you allow one group, you're not going to be able to say no to anyone else. And I, I see the potential for a wedge issue arising in the town. We don't want to divide the town. People can fly their flags and their plaques in front of their homes as we do now. And um, I just think it's a, div I think it, it has potential to be a real problem. I don't want to see a KKK or don't tread on me or any of that stuff. But once you open that door, you can't close it. Right, and, and I, I think, I right, think which is for the right. benefit of everybody. <clears throat> and I, I think, you know, there's, there sometimes sadly is confusion between political and human rights, political signage and human rights signage. And I think that's where some of the issue is. You know, I don't think the pride flag is a political flag. It's a, it's a human rights issue, but some people don't see it that way. They see it as a religious issue, which can be politicized. And, and that's kind of the, that area that, you know, I'd like some more input from the human rights committee on their thoughts on it and what best practices are in other communities mm -hmm. and how other communities that are doing it are handling it because mm -hmm. you know the discretion is you know when someone applies for a permit to gather in the park whatever their entity is you know we we have to kind of let them gather in the park for a public gathering that's a right but with the flag it's a little bit different you know you're representing a view or something like that. So I think it gets a little, a little dice here, right. but and so, uh, I'm curious to, to, to hear from other people that either know more about it or do, do more research about it and, and get well, back to does the state you know. have any guidance. What about our, our town council? That's, That's a good question. I, I wonder, I wonder how the, if the state at the Capitol building, if they have a policy or something for what they fly at the, at the Capitol. Or but, you know, doesn't even have to be Massachusetts Capitol. Any kind of a right. other I municipal building, and and see what the state does. Um, I I just think it's uh, I think it's going to open up a can of worms. That's what I think. And and I I would just like to add one other thing. Um, the Chauvin trial that was decided today was about one bad actor. Yet the politicizing of this bad actor turned into a mantra of defund the police and an intolerance for people who want to and do support the police with Blue Lives Matter or support the thin blue line signs. And that's exactly the kind of thing that gets out of hand, um, that people have a right to support what, whatever concept 
that they want, right or wrong. It's somebody's individual choice. And I don't, I, I don't want to see f- flag raising, politicizing and polarizing our town. Right. We're Switzerland. Jamie, thoughts? Yeah, um, um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted by Rosie's comment about the <laughs> about the, the one tra- apple. that actor. Um, I, I will we'll have to leave that that discussion for another day. <laughs> yeah, but, agreed. But there's um, there's no, I mean, there's no doubt that if the town flies, uh, you know, raises certain flags, that it will not please everybody. Um, uh, but I do believe that there are some fundamental things that our town should be able to agree to, um, and that, uh, and it's not always a, you know, it's not always a human rights sort of issue at all. Um, um, and, you know, for instance, you, um, I mean, you can fly a flag in support of, of, veterans and police but certain people are pacifists and don't think we should be doing that but it doesn't but that doesn't stop us from doing those kinds of things so getting to the kind of the legal point or the public policy point i think the reason why so the the town council and or joe was sort of steering us in the direction that we were going when we had the policy the proposed policy in front of us was making clear that it is not um you know, that this is not a free speech zone that we're creating, that it's government speech and, um, uh, you know, and leaving it in the discretion, I think, as it was in the discretion of the town manager. Um, so all I have to say, I, I don't deny that certain, you know, some people will be, uh, that there will be disagreement about things and I might disagree with, you know, yeah. a decision that gets made. Um, but I don't think it's uh, it's appropriate to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Um, so, and and I think you know that. And again, the, you know the, the Human Rights Commission is discussing this tomorrow because there have been some requests regarding Pride flag and Juneteenth, um, and some of these you know do receive you know na- either national or state declarations uh, at times um, so those things it seems like it would be appropriate to have the flag raised but anyway I, I mean I again not that the Human Rights Commission makes the decisions for this board that's right right um, it is you know as we've said a number of times and everybody understands but um, you know I think uh, it is it is worth at least hearing their considered opinion. I, I, I agree with a lot you said, Jamie, and I think that, you know, I want to hear from, <laughs> and I want some more research kind of in that vein on, on what kind of other towns have done in the past or are doing now, you know, because a lot of this has brought a lot of these types of things to light and a lot of towns are probably doing similar things that we're trying to do at the same time. So, you know, I'm a bit uh, I'm always big into kind of looking at what other people are doing and getting best practices and, and guidance from other entities or the state. And I'm not sure maybe the human rights committee will dig more into it, hopefully, and, and, and give us some real guidance on it. And then we can have a robust discussion about it, you know, for setting some type of policy when it comes back to us from their research and advice. Sound good to everybody. Jamie, do you know if they're, when they talk about tomorrow night, and Joe, the same kind of thing. Should we have somebody relate to them that we're also, cons- I mean, we're considering this flag policy. I'm sure they're aware of it, but, you know, we haven't quite given them any direct guidance yet. I'm um, here, Sean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, no, here. I'm here listening. Oh, well, good. So I guess I don't have to tell, nope, tell you. <laughs> you don't have to tell us. I'm here. All right. Perfect. So, and, and then I guess I can, I can say directly to you kind of what I was saying is, you know, hopefully you guys will have a good discussion about it and do some research and find some best, best practices and kind of what's going to work best for, for us and then make some recommendations and also, you know, work with Joe and legal if we need to, you know, and, and kind of thinking about possible 
I, I hate to say, but worst case scenarios, you know, as mm-hmm. I kind of mentioned before, mm-hmm. and Rosie and Darcy mentioned, you know, if we fly the Slippery pride slippery. flag one day and then a you know anti pride play the next day you know what's what's our policy or discretion on how we handle those applications when they come in mm-hmm. you know i think that's important yeah. to know because i just i i i fear uh, but i don't think it would happen is kind of a free for all like that where it's going back and forth and and we're sending kind of mixed messages because i think we want to be a inclusive and caring community and if we're flying flags that aren't inclusive and caring it's it's not really sending the right message to what we want to show for our town Mm -hmm. Um, i can assure you that we are already very much on the research side of things and making sure that it's based on what is happening in the world and not just our whims and wishes perfect that's a great answer i like that (laughs) Uh, Rosie, were you going to say something? I was going to say that, um, to, um, uh, well, I certainly appreciate um, what other towns are doing. Um, we should make this decision based on what's best for, for our town. Um, and so I, I don't think that um, a, a discretionary policy requires, you know, state and, and national research um, to make our decision. I think that there's enough division in this country already. And, and I think that it doesn't do the tensions in this country any good to put one flag up and then say, no, we're not going to put your flag up. That's, that's not right. We don't, we don't have the right to be discretionary when it comes to individuals' right to express themselves. That's why I feel strongly that... I see signs and flags all over the place. And I honestly respect that. And people do have the right to to say what they want to. But as a government entity, we represent everybody all the time. And and so that's that's my very strong feeling about this. Switzerland, we are neutral. We are supportive of every entity who has who has um a policy or or rights that they want that they believe in. I I I certainly believe in human rights. I I just feel that this is not a good decision for us to consider raising anybody's flag unless we're going to raise everybody's flag. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, uh, Rosie, for your opinion. Um, I think we're at the tail end of it. Aren't we? Was that our last our last item? Besides moving no, into Blake here, uh, is it still open comment. Yeah, Tosh, go ahead. Yeah, I just like to uh, reiterate what Rosie and Darcy have said about um, yeah, the potential. I think it is a simple choice whether you know you say as Rosie put it, Switzerland maybe uh, or just let's just say America with the American flag. It's a very elegant, simple decision because theoretically, American flag represents all of us in different views. Or you'll have to let pretty much every view go up if you're going to allow that. Is it you know either an identitarian or advocacy kind of platform, the flagpole in front of town? You can't be consistent. I mean, I guess you could say, well, okay, we have a committee that determines who good guys and who are the bad guys, and the bad guys can't have their flag because everybody knows who the good guys and the bad guys are. And you just have a few people in town deciding for the whole town, and it's sort of represent, purporting to represent the whole town with town property, what the town supports and doesn't support. I mean, obviously, if you really want to do that, you'd have to call a town meeting and say, hey, what does the town vote on? What do we believe in or not? Um, but that's not practical. We're probably not going to end up doing that. So I think the, unfortunately, the Human Rights Commission is very interested in political turf marking and wants to have their views up and think they can determine who, who's, you know, what's appropriate or not. But I think, obviously, that's impossible to say in any kind of objective standard. I mean, I've made, as you know, I, I sent letters to you, I've made certain flag requests myself, pending any kind of lifting of the moratorium. That was, you know, I was told the moratorium would stay at least until July, until something's figured out. So, you know, if um, people are interested in having flags up, no one has contacted me to say whether they approve or disapprove my request, which I think are pretty reasonable. They're very patriotic flags. So, yeah, there's no way to be consistent in any practical sense. I think Mr. Knudsen's a lawyer. He probably understands legally you can't make an argument that 
oh, you're going to just know what's a good flag and not. I mean, you have to kind of apply, you know, equal access to everybody, you know, sort of like uh, it's just not going to work out if you can pick a few people, maybe a majority of the board, three out of two says, well, we think this is a good flag and this is a bad flag. You know, I, I'm against political turf marking on public property, um, you know, for obvious pitfalls that can happen. And it'll just basically some part of the population is going to legitimately say, well, I don't trust my government anymore. My government's deciding, a few people deciding, and a certain committee who is definitely has a political bent is going to, to basically try to dictate or try to uh, put up their view of what the town represents. But it's not true. We haven't pulled the whole town and said, what do you support and you don't. It's um it's not a good move, and it's actually dangerous because you don't want people not trusting your government. I mean, at least our municipal government, the municipal level, should be neutral. I can understand as you get higher up in national debates, things do get political, and that's understandable in partisan. I'd like to keep partisan and identitarian, and this is very important, identity politics, you know, picking and choosing, you know, who we think are good guys and bad guys is a big mistake, and it's very dangerous. So it may sound like a feel-good thing to some people who are maybe kind of sleepwalking into this issue, but if you want a political turf mark, it's not smart. And um, you know, I'm just saying you could go either way. But I'm willing. Hey, if you're willing to open it up to political speech, hey, open up to everybody. That's fine with that, and see, you know, see who who's really tolerant, and who isn't. Mm-hmm. But um, if we say, well, we're going to tolerate this view, and but that's those people are bad guys. We can't let them have their speech, and we'll know it when we see it if it's uh, if it's disturbing or, or evil or not. That just, that's uh, setting yourselves up for you know a lot of a lot of trouble. Let's put it that way. That's all I want to say. And I, I'd like to back up what Darcy and Rosemary said. I think it's very reasonable. And I think Mr. Farrell's kind of cautious take on it. He wants to look at it more. Is is you know I think it's his instincts kicking in correctly. And Mr. You know Mr. Domalowitz, when the raising of the pride flag happened last year, and they immediately thought, well, okay, what does this really mean as far as flag policy? And then the moratorium is placed. I think the instinct there. Follow that instinct and try to keep it so we just have a town government that represents everybody and is not kind of picking favorites and getting into what is kind of a national hysteria on all kinds of issues that I'd rather not see get into our town government. I think just like, you know, Rosemary said and Darcy, hey, political expression on your private property, fine. I have no problem with anyone putting whatever they, you know, within the law, you know, um, on the private property. But if you want to drag partisan and identitarian issues into the public sphere and public property. It's yeah. very dangerous, actually. That's all I'd like to say. All right. Thanks, Josh. Uh, I, as I'm sure you will be paying attention to this issue when it comes up again. Uh, so stay tuned. All Thank right. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, we have a executive session up next. Um, so we John, do I have to, uh, John, do I have to say I'm, I'm attending the meeting at some point? Yeah, I'll put you in the roll call vote on the next on the next uh, round okay. here when we get in the executive session. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Um, so let me just find my card here. All right, so uh, I will entertain a motion uh, to discuss uh, discuss discuss uh, a strategy uh, session in preparations for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel in which we will not be returning to open session. So moved. Okay, Darcy. Thank you, Rosie. Uh, And then we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, And Bill, why don't you participate in this one too? Uh, And I'll start with uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale here. Um, Jamie. Uh, Jamie Cateson, aye. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know what you meant, Rosie. I'm sure Mary Alice will know what you meant. Uh, Dar- uh, Rosie, sorry, I got missed up there. Rosie Kennedy, I. Uh, Bill? William Molson here and I. <laughs> Good job, uh, Bill. And Sean Farrell, uh, I. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, and Joe, you're going to stick with us for the beginning of this.